we were going to start this service talking about the countless many people who were praying for Larry Sarlos, our wonderful friend, our favorite cowboy, who sustained a very serious injury falling off a horse that threw him down a very steep 100 or 100 foot embankment. I'm now here to tell you that this last Friday, Larry Sarlos went to heaven. He's now with Jesus. The hope of his heart has been fulfilled. He's now with the Savior and Lord. I hope he's riding great, big, wonderful horses in heaven and enjoying all the great glory that God has promised for him. So our prayers now are for the family, for Linda uh, and for Keith and for Kirk, for their spouses and all the grandkids. Our prayers are, are for them, for the entire Sarlos family. I want to thank you all for your many prayers. Please continue to pour into this family. They're such fantastic people. And I want you to know that heaven is real. And Larry is with the Lord in heaven. And that he has the hope of heaven now completely fulfilled. And that Larry's last words to me were that he wanted to burn brightly for Jesus Christ. And he wanted every single one of you to know the Lord Jesus Christ personally in your heart. And so now we're going to begin our service as we turn our eyes away from our heavenly woes as we fix our eyes on the Lord. I invite you to worship and I invite you to get ready to turn to the Word of God. Good morning, everyone. We're here to worship the Lord together in song like we do every week. Um, we're still here on the internet. We've been waiting here on this YouTube channel for you to come back. So I'm glad you finally joined us. We really so, missed you. Um, yeah, we, uh, we believe at TRC that songs are a place that we go to meet with God, um, that there's something that happens when we lift our voices and sing together, that God actually meets us in the middle of those melodies. It's, it's a two-way conversation. It's not just us saying ni nice things about God. It's a, it's a place we meet with Him. So let's pray, and let's start to um, lift our voices. So Holy Spirit, come. And Lord, we just ask that you would let your kingdom come in every home, in every town, every city, every, every country, every state that's watching, Lord, we, we just pray for your kingdom to come and do your work, Lord. And use these simple songs as a connection point with you, Lord. We want to meet with the living God today, not just sing nice things or say nice things, Lord. We want a, an actual encounter. So as we sing, come. Come. Thank you, Lord. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. Turning, no turning back, 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 no
No turning back I won't look back No turning back No turning back Yes, Lord Let the King of my heart Be the mountain where I run The fountain I drink from Oh, He is my song Let the King of my heart Be the shadow where I hide The ransom for my life Oh, He is my song You are good You are good You're good Oh, you are good You're good You are good, you're good, oh, you are good, you're good, oh, let the king, let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves, oh, he is my song. Let the King of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days. Oh, He is my song. You are good. You are good. You're good. Oh, You are good. You're good. We believe, help our unbelief, God, that you are faithful. Mm. You are good. 
promises never fail when the night is holding on to me God is holding on when the night is holding on to me God sing that when the night when the night is holding on to me God is holding on when the night is holding on to me God is holding on you are holding on you are holding on to us you are holding on when we don't know where our next paycheck's coming from Lord you're holding on and you're good you're faithful we trust you, Lord. Help our unbelief, God. Bring deliverance to us, Lord. In our time, in our day, come and move. In this place, in our time, and in our day, come and move. In this place, come and move. Come and move. God of our mothers and fathers, come now and move among us. What you did before, come and do once more. We want to be a part of your story. God of our mothers and fathers, show your glory, show your glory to your sons and daughters. What you were back then, come and be again. We want to see your power in our presence, in our time, in our time. In our day, come and move in this place. In our time, in our time, and in our day, come and move in this place. Come and move, God. God, God in this place. God of our mothers and fathers, send your spirit just like you promised. You can have your way, visit us today. We want to see your power in our presence, in our time, in our time, in our day. Come and move in this place, 
in our time, in our time, and in our day. In this place, come and move, God, move, God, move, God, in this place. Come and move, God, move, God, move, God, in this place. Come and move, come and move, God. Come and move. In Los Olivos, Lord, come and move. Come and move. In Solvang, Lord, in San Inez, Lord, Los Alamos, Lord, in the Central Coast, Santa Barbara. Behind Sarlus and Sons, come and move, come and move. God of our mothers and fathers, come be our God. God of our mothers and fathers, come be our God. Come take the vineyard you planted, make us new wine. God of our mothers and fathers, come be our God. God of our mothers and fathers, come be our God. Come take the vineyard you planted and make us new wine. Come and move, God, in every household, Lord, every family. Come and move every life, everyone watching. And in this part of the world, come and move, Lord. Bring healing, bring deliverance. Turn our hearts back to you, God. Bring your kingdom the central coast of California, Lord. Bring your kingdom. Yes, Lord. Let's just sing this. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness, Lord. Sing Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. 
Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. One more time. In our time. In our time. In our day. Come and move in this place. In our time. And in our day, come and move in this place. Come and move, God. Move, God. Move, God. In this place. Come and move, God. Lord, we love it when you come. Lord, we know you're here, but there's this, this extra sense of your nearness in these moments. And it touches our hearts, Lord. And we're just so grateful that you, the Almighty God, draws near in such tender ways sometimes, Lord. We thank you for your peaceful presence, Lord, in the midst of whatever we're going through, Lord, we thank you for that peaceful presence just to come and surround us even now. And we do just simply pray, please move, Lord, please move. Please move. We know you're working, Lord. Open our eyes to see it, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So glad that you got a chance to join us. That worship set was fantastic. I knew for myself I needed to be ministered to in that exact way. And and as I like to say on more than one occasion, uh, my wonderful friends, Casey and Lindsay, just took me to church. And so I pray that that ministered to your heart. Open your Bibles and go with me to Matthew's Gospel as we continue. A wonderful verse here that we're going to look at as we continue is teaching in the Beatitudes. And in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, which has this wonderful line in it that Jesus is going to talk about, where he says, Blessed, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. And some translations say filled, and I'll explain that more as we go. But blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. So we're going to talk about satisfaction. I'm going to talk about how God helps us to experience satisfaction, how God is so satisfying when you enter into a relationship with God. When you come to that place where you know God, it's so beautiful, it's so wonderful. And so God here comes and teaches us about this satisfaction. So satisfaction and finding satisfaction in God is one of the most dominant teachings in the Bible. When you read the Bible, when you get into the book, when you get into the scriptures, you begin to realize that God is talking about this intimate relationship with him and how deeply satisfying it is. You were made, designed to have this intimate, deep relationship with God. And it is so satisfying, it is more satisfying than absolutely anything else. I'm going to give you from the scriptures uh, two examples here that I want to talk through. The first one is in Psalm 107. And so in Psalm 107, the Bible says this, and let me get there. Psalm 107, verse 9, which uh, will then say the following. Where am I at in verse 9? For he satisfies the longing soul. 
This is Psalm 107, verse 9. For he satisfies a longing soul, and the hungry soul he fills with good things. Are you hungry? Are you hungry today? Are you hungry for life? Are you hungry for God? Are you hungry for answers? Then the scripture here says that he fills you. He fills you at this very moment. He fills you with good things. And then Isaiah chapter 58, uh, verse 11 will say as follows. And I'm going to read this uh, to you and you're going to love it. Isaiah 58, verse 11 says, And the Lord will guide you continually. The Lord will guide you continually. And satisfy your desire in the scorched places. So do you have places that have been burned over in your life? Have you been burned in life? Do you feel like there's parts of your soul that have been scorched and burned? So this is what the scripture is saying. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire in the scorched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like the water garden, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. This is the the miracle transformation of God, of entering into the satisfaction of God and knowing him and having him personally in your life. I don't give a lot of quotes when I preach, but here's one I want you to know about from Jonathan Edwards. And I believe Jonathan Edwards was looking forward. He's the father of of, of this great revival called the Great Awakening. And Jonathan Edwards, I believe from God, had this vision. He could see into the future and understand that God was doing this new work in the birthing of America. He would die before 1776 would actually come about. But this great revival would, would, would be part of the birth of our nation. And Jonathan Edwards would say this, the enjoyment of God, Jonathan Edwards would say, is the only happiness with which our souls can be satisfied. The enjoyment of God is the only happiness with which our souls can be satisfied. And you can enjoy in the moment other things, but the deepest enjoyment of your soul is exactly what Jonathan Edwards is saying. God is extremely glorified. Is a paraphrase I want to give us from an author. God is extremely glorified when we are deeply satisfied in him. God is extremely glorified. His name is lifted higher and higher and higher. He's glorified when we are deeply satisfied in him. And this is the core teaching that Jesus brings us to as we look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 6 here, where we can find, as we hunger and thirst for righteousness, where we can find this deep satisfaction. Your problem, your problem is the following. Your satisfaction button is broken and only Jesus Christ can fix it. This is the problem of humans all over the world. Everyone thinks they can be self-satisfied. They think they can determine for themselves what will actually make them happy and bring to them satisfaction. And so they pursue all kinds of different courses of life. Your satisfaction button, my satisfaction button in our humanity is actually broken. It can only be fixed in Jesus Christ. I want to take you to a great theologian, arguably one of the greatest theologians in America right now, a man by the name of Jim Carrey. And Jim Carrey has this great quote, and he's very serious about it. He's very determined to communicate it. I want to read it to you, and I want you to, I want you to think it out loud. I want you to realize, he, Jim Carrey says, I wish everyone could get rich. Isn't that fascinating? He's saying this. No, no, it's, it, it, no, he's not necessarily being generous as he says this. Follow, the, follow what he's saying. He says, I wish everyone could get rich and famous in everything. I wish they could get rich and famous in everything. And they could have everything they ever dreamed of so they can see that's not the answer. That's what Jim Carrey's trying to say. And he, he has a great place. He can say, listen, I have, I'm at the top of popularity. I have reached that. I have made more money than I could ever imagine. I have had all the things and the trappings of this world and lifetime. And he says, I wish everyone could get rich and famous in everything they ever dreamed of so they can see that is not the answer. And that is pointing us, whether Jim Carrey ever knows it or not, towards the teachings of Jesus Christ. Uh, Just last uh, comment or two related to how everyone on planet Earth 
is seeking satisfaction. It's so fascinating that the Rolling Stones sung that song, Satisfaction, back in the 70s. And if you follow contemporary music, it's been redone and redone and redone and redone in so many different artists. And even John Legend is not teaching about that song or singing about that song, excuse me, right now, but he has his own trying to communicate that there's difficulty in finding satisfaction in this lifetime. Last week I had this graph, I wanna bring it on the screen for you again. I had this graph where, where there's a letter N inside, inside uh, this graph. And that letter N right here is, is, is helping you understand that you bring nothing to God. You come empty, you come broken, you come with your hands, you bring nothing to God. The foundation is that God brings everything. You bring nothing and God brings everything and he gives you this foundation of everything. And then the vertical axis is talking about the kingdom of God and how the kingdom of God is gonna rise in your life and how the kingdom of God is gonna expand in your life and how the kingdom of God, when it's working and moving, you work with it. And these waves here which show the, are simply showing the Beatitudes, the first, second, third, now the fourth Beatitude. These are simply the teachings of Jesus at this moment. The kingdom of God can rise inside you. You will bring nothing to it though. That's the paradox we spoke of in earlier teachings, but God will bring everything to you even at this very moment. No one has it all figured out, friends. When we talk about satisfaction, there's absolutely nobody who has it all figured out except for Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ actually has it all figured out. We know the testimony of that because we know that he went to the cross and rose on the third day. This is the Easter story. He actually has it all figured out. Everyone is on a journey somewhere. It's a matter of whether you're on the train with Jesus going to his destination. Or are you going on a train by yourself to your own destination? That's bad news, my friends. Are you on the Jesus train going with him to his destination? And so you have to cross the lines of faith. You first have to believe. You actually have to believe that Jesus rose from the dead and that he's God and that he loves you. You have to believe it. Secondly, you actually need to receive it, which is to make it very personal into your life. You actually need to receive it. That's a form of declaring to God that he's right. Third, you need to agree with God. There's an agreement. There's a confession that needs to be spoken out loud and understood. So you have to believe it. You have to receive it. You have to agree with God. And fourth, you have to pray. You have to pray and exercise faith and cross these lines so that you can know that God is saving your soul. And lastly, you need to make it public in some way, shape, or form. You need to make it public, whether it's actual through baptism or whether it's a public declaration of faith through service or whether it's a public witness. These are the things you do to actually place yourself in that, that, that environment where God is going to come and show you that he's still satisfying. No one has it all figured out except for Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has got it figured out. Now let's go to our text. Let's go to our text proper. I love this word satisfied. It's very simple to understand. This word satisfied is actually very, very simple to understand. It is relating to primarily large animals when they would come to be fed by their master and their master would just give them and give them that food, give them that hay, give them that water, would just give and give and give and their tummies would get so full that they'd be satisfied and they'd walk away. And so this is one of these unique words that actually work of two different kind of definitions. One is to say satisfied, the other one is to say filled, and both are accurate and correct. You're filling the tummy of this large animal to the point where that large animal is completely satisfied and then is just gonna walk away completely happy. We know this when we talk about being filled, whether it's at a holiday meal or not, it's the same way. And so this word is what Jesus is talking about, where God is going to come and fill you and fill you and fill you and fill you, and that you can taste and see that the Lord is actually good. Now, here's how satisfaction works. Jesus is going to talk about, blessed are those who hunger. I want you to hold on to that word hunger. I want you to hold on to the word for thirst and the word for righteousness. This is what we're going to look at. The idea of being hungry, thirsty, and, and understanding righteousness and being satisfied in God. Hunger, when you are hungry, when you're hungry for God, you're going to be hungry for God and find yourself in this place of satisfaction before him. Or, or you're going to have a drive that takes you away from fullness into anxiety. 
And that's where we find ourselves in a culture right now where so many people are full of anxiety. But even in these circumstances, I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ can visit you and he can drive you to fullness and he can drive you to satisfaction. Second, in terms of thirst, you will actually have meaning in life. That's what that thirst is about. What is life all about? Does life mean something? Does my life mean something? Or you'll actually have emptiness. Righteousness, righteousness is God bringing acceptance to you by his son, Jesus Christ, and by the cross, or you will actually have resignation. And many people live a life and they've actually resigned themselves to tremendous, tremendous loss. So let's talk about anxiety. Let's talk about this drive that God has and how it works inside your heart. If you, if you do not allow the cross to drive you to this place where hunger fills you in Jesus Christ, you'll experience anxiety. And that anxiety will do two things for you. One is it will give you a failure of nerve. Or secondly, it will give you a failure of steel. So first, that failure of nerve is kind of your conscience. That's inward. That's the things inside you. You have a conscience and God wants to nurture that conscience. You're going to notice that people find themselves in a crazy cycle from time to time, repeating because they have a weak conscience, the same sins, the same mistakes, the same problem, dealing with the same loser people, all of that, all of that, that crazy cycle. That's the conscience. So you have a failure of nerve, a failure of nerve in a very, very important moment to do the right thing and understand the right things and have the right things brought into your life, you have a failure of nerve because you're experiencing anxiety. God wants to drive fullness into you. You can have a failure of steel. Steel is really fascinating because steel is actually you know, one of the strongest elements out there when it's meant when it's fabricated, and yet you can actually have these little micro fractures in steel. And those micro fractures in steel can actually work their way into that very, very strong metal and actually begin to break it down. And sometimes that's us with our faith, where these, these moments of anxiety, uh, as, we, as, we, as we struggle to put faith forward in Jesus Christ, can actually get these micro fractures in our soul where we're asking all kinds of questions, but feeling like God has not given us the answers and we have to stay at the cross and stay at the cross because God will actually visit us and fill us. I love this teaching from John's Gospel. In John chapter 6, verse 35, it's a fascinating story. Jesus is on his A game. That's a fascinating chapter. I would encourage you tonight to go home and read John chapter 6. Just that one chapter alone, it's so fascinating. Jesus is being attacked because he's telling people he's God. He's telling people he's the Jewish Messiah. He's telling them that he's going to be resurrected on the third day. And he's using this illustration of manna in terms of Moses and the Israelites back in the Old Testament. And he's saying that I actually am this bread of life. They don't get it. They can't get it. They can't receive it. They can't understand it. In fact, at the end of the chapter, uh, the, all these great followers, after Jesus has done miracles, after he has filled them with many good things, after he's healed them, after he's walked on water, they're actually going to leave. And Jesus is going to turn to the handful of followers and say, are you going to do the same thing? And Peter's going to stand up and say, no, you have the words of eternal life. So Jesus here in verse 35 of chapter 6 says the following, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. This was the teaching they could not receive, but you must receive it right now because he actually is this bread. I am the bread of life. And whoever comes to me, Jesus says, shall not hunger. Are you hungry? Jesus is going to camp on this verse and this phrase. And he's going to say, whoever comes to me shall not hunger. And whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Are you thirsty? My friend, the deepest things in your life, God will minister to the deepest, darkest caverns of your life, God will fill. As you come out of darkness into light, as you lay your life down at the cross before him, these are Jesus' teaching and his promises where he is indeed this bread of life that he talks about. So anxiety can drive us from this righteous hunger that we have. We have a hunger. We have a thirst for righteousness. Anxiety can take you down that dark road and you want to do away with it. You want to hunger for God and ask him to be that bread of life where you can be filled. Thirst is fascinating. So thirst is really related to the meaning of life, and you'll actually find yourself having deep meaning in life or being empty in life. One other way of thinking about it is to think about purpose or contentment. And this is the idea of thirst and how to find it. 
I'm going to give you the secret right now of how to find it. And I'm going to take you to Psalm 139 right now. And I want to read this to you because I want you to tune in right here, right now, right now. I want you to listen to this. This is actually the secret of how to find it, how to find that thirst. When you say, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty for life. Nothing is, seems to work out. My prayers don't seem answered. And I want to know, well, here is the answer at this moment. For in Psalm 139 and verse, verse 23, the Psalm says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any grievous way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. So here it is. Here's the secret. Here's what you must do. And if you do this, I guarantee you in Jesus' name, by him resurrected from the dead, that you will indeed find it. You have to pray it. You have to pray it and this thirst will be satisfied. You have to pray, God, search me. Search me. Break me and use me. That's your prayer. That's your sacred prayer to finding your thirst satisfied in this lifetime. God, will you search me? Search me. You're the one who knows all the inside portions of me. Search me. Break me. If there's anything in me that needs to be broken, then break me. Break me of my pride, my selfishness, whatever it is that God reveals, God, break me and then use me. If you pray this, and I believe you will, you will find meaning in life. You will find purpose in life. You will find tremendous power way above your earthly circumstances. This is God's promise. Psalm 139, verse 23. And it actually is how we find Jesus as he's teaching here about being satisfied. And then next, related to righteousness. So we've talked about hunger. We've talked about thirst being satisfied. Now we're talking about righteousness. Righteousness has to do with acceptance, acceptance before God in particular. And if you don't have acceptance before God, then you're going to enter into resignation. And most people I meet, somewhere in their life, they had some great dream. And something came and took that away. And so they resigned themselves to some sort of apathy or resigned themselves to some sort of smallness, some sort of smallness. And they ask questions uh, that they don't understand. And they don't know how to seek God. Let me give you a Bible reference that will encourage you. Judges chapter 6 is the story of Gideon. It's a fantastic story in Judges chapter 6. And in Judges chapter 6, Gideon is asking these very same questions. He has not seen miracles in his life. He's seen oppression in his life. He's heard these stories from, from before, from his forefathers, about Moses, about the parting of the Red Sea, about Pharaoh being defeated. But he sees none of it in his life. And he looks at this book, and it seems empty, and it seems worthless. And so he doesn't know what to do. God comes to him and he begins to push back at God. And have you ever pushed back at God? Well, then you're in good company because Gideon begins to push back. And he says, why has all this happened? Where are all the miracles? And then he begins to talk about how small he is and incapable he is and how he's the least. And God says, watch what I do. And he begins to tell him what the next step is. He begins to tell him what that next faith step is and what that next faith step is. And let me tell you how God resolves that. God asked Gideon to pick a fight. God asked Gideon to pick a fight so that God could come and be glorified in and through a conflict. And sometimes there's conflicts in life and they're actually God ordained so that God could be glorified so that people could see Jesus Christ risen from the dead doing great things. I'm here to tell you that you might feel small in life, but God is big. And I'm here to tell you that your circumstances might feel so overwhelming in life. You may have a conflict in life and it's so beyond what you could think about trying to resolve. And I'm here to tell you that God is greater. God is the God of Gideon. He is the God of angel armies. Jesus Christ is God risen from the dead. And you must believe, you must receive that into your life. You must agree with God on his truth and pray and pray right now. Now, right now, I'm going to pray and ask you, right where you're at, to speak some words out loud. You have to exercise faith, and I believe you will in these next few moments. You might even feel uncomfortable doing it, but you must do it. And Jesus Christ will come and do the great things, and he will give you all the satisfaction that he has promised in this book through his life. So my friends, pray with me right now. Pray out loud. 
the following. Lord Jesus, I need you. Save me and I will be saved. Heal me deep inside and I'll be healed. Grant me your strength and your power. I give you my life, Jesus. I lay down my life to you. Be my God, be my Savior, be my Lord. Continue to pray out loud with me. Take away all of my sin. Change me from the inside. Bring all of your rightness to me. And take away all that is wrong in me. And give me a new life. Fill me with the Holy Spirit and I'll be filled in Jesus' name. Can you pray it with me? Amen. Amen. I'm so excited. I believe God has done some great things in your life and you're going to see him do miracles in your life. And so I bless you. I bless you. And I'm so thankful for you. I want to ask you to do me a favor. I have a tool that will be helpful to you. Actually, I have two that I want to tell you about. The first one is go to simplebiblecommentary.com and there's a course there and it's free to you. Click on the buttons, just take the course and you can enjoy a free course that'll help you focus on Jesus. Next, I actually have a new podcast out. It's called Reading My Bible with Rick Soto. And uh, what I've simply done is uh, I'm beginning to read one chapter at a time in the Bible. So I just completed 1 Peter and each of the Bible's chapters are actually about five minutes or so. And I've just done this so that you can be out uh, doing the lawn, you can be on a run, you can be working out, you can just be at home. And I want you to hear the Word of God read out loud. I just want you to hear the Word of God read out loud and I hope that blesses you. And so go to simplebiblecommentary.com, take the course, enjoy that, and also turn into a new podcast called Reading My Bible and it has my name on it, Rick Soto. Thank you, I love you so much. And so does Jesus Christ. God is for you. God is with you. And God will do great things in your life. So great to be with you this morning and look forward to us getting through this era uh, where we're winding down and being able to get back together. I believe that will be sooner than later. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for continuing in tithes and offerings. That has made a tremendous difference in the lives of so many people. Uh, this week alone uh, and last week, there was a, a line. We have our offices right above CHOP and we have uh, what we just nicknamed the space right behind ACE. There was a line of cars all the way down the street and through the parking lot of people coming for fresh grocery bags of food, the kind of thing that they can take home and make a meal and make a really good meal the way they wanted. We were able to secure fresh of everything, really, it seemed like, and actually able to give out this really fresh milk, which was fantastic. We'd love to be able to do that. So that continues, and that continues because of your tithes and offerings that makes uh, this kind of ministry to our community at this crucial time uh, possible. We also went and took uh, took dinner to uh, uh, the staff team at uh, our local cottage hospital. Uh, they weren't expecting that, and some of you guys were the, the initiators of that, and so thank you for that. Uh, this next coming week, we actually get a chance to uh, do that for our local uh, sheriff station. And so we've been finding people that have been serving the community that we can minister to in very unexpected ways, and it has meant the world to them not to mention all the other things that we do to try and keep people uh, in, a, in a positive and good place. So thank you for your tithes and offerings. I would ask you now, you have a giving button at the very bottom. Uh, you can click on the more button and you could click on that and go to our ranchchurch.com slash give and be able to give through our online portal. That is tremendously helpful to us. And even at this time, thank you. I believe God's gonna be faithful to us as we go. If you want to really help us out even farther, you can in terms of this uh, ministry on YouTube. Uh, you can click the like button and also share it. And uh, this week I'm asking to see if we can get 100 people to share our service. I heard a wonderful story where uh, there was a, a gentleman who got witness to just this last week at our church. And uh, he was sent the service, was able to get in contact with us and came and gave his life to Jesus. And so I love hearing those positive Jesus stories that way. So I hope all this means meaningful to you. Love you so much. Uh, can't wait to get back together and uh, just laugh and, uh, and enjoy life uh, into the full. Um, be blessed in Jesus' name.
Good enough. Hey church family, Toby Soto here. I hope that the worship and the message you just heard continue to speak to you, whether it's a Sunday morning, afternoon, or another day during the week. I have two announcements for us real quickly. First announcement is to go to our church website. If you're new, not a normal attender, or have found us out through the wonderful internet, we actually would like to connect with you. So if you go to our website, ranchchurch.com, then on the opening page, you'll see a little button that says connect or connect with us. Go ahead and hit that button. And when you do that, we actually have a free gift that we would like to give to you. So for people who are just first time checking this out, go to our website, hit connect, you'll get a free gift. And for our regulars, our wonderful family here, we also need you to hit a button for us too. So same deal, go to thebranchchurch.com and the button's gonna be to the left of the connect with us button. And it's just gonna say something about updating your contact information. As we've been reaching out with you guys, we realize we don't have everyone's most recent phone numbers, addresses, and we'd like to get those from you so that we can stay in touch and continue to minister to you guys. This information will not be shared with anyone outside of Branch Church leadership. Again, we just want it so that we can bless you guys, stay in touch with you guys during COVID-19. Hey, we love you, we're praying for you, and we're trusting and believing that God's gonna get us through this. Looking forward to seeing all of you guys in person so we can give each other hugs, high fives, and all the wonderful stuff we did before this happened. God bless.